good day everyone and welcome to our English class. Today, we will be discussing a very interesting topic. But before that, allow me to ask you this question. How do you deal with judgments thrown towards you by those people who don't know you that much in the first place? In everything we do and we don't, remember that people will still have something to say on you. Hence, dealing with such requires a lot of endurance that might put you to the edge. And so, as an intelligent FCPCian who enable themselves to solve the problems encountered in daily lives, you should know that the best way to deal with such is communication. Moreover, this will help you to show understanding of how world literatures and other types serve as vehicles of expressing and resolving conflicts among individuals or groups to show unity in diversity. Also, it helps us to know how to use strategies in critical reading, listening, viewing, and affirmation and negation markers to deliver impromptu and extemporaneous speeches as reflected in the course Learning Outcome 2. And so today, we are going to talk about bias and prejudice. First, let us define what is bias. Bias is a prejudice toward or unfair characterization of the members of a particular group. Bias is so common in speech and writing that we often are not or even aware of it. But it is the responsibility of everyone to become conscious of and write about bias. It is also a prejudice in favor of or against one thing, person, or group compared with another, usually in a way considered to be unfair. While prejudice is an affective feeling towards a person or group member based solely on their group membership. The word is often used to refer to preconceived, usually unfavorable feelings toward people or a person because of their sex, gender, beliefs, values, social class, age, disability, religion, sexuality, race or ethnicity, language, nationality, beauty, occupation, education, criminality, sport team affiliation, or other personal characteristics. In this case, it refers to a positive or negative evaluation of another person based on their perceived group membership. Prejudice can also refer to unfounded beliefs and it may include any unreasonable attitude that is unusually resistant to rational influence. So how can we avoid being biased and avoid prejudice? First, we need to be particular with this rule. Okay, Rule to remember, first one is the gender. We need to be particular with their gender. Avoid using any masculine or feminine nouns when the gender of the person is not known. Like for example, instead of just simply saying uh, spokesman, we might use the term representative. Or instead of saying businesswoman or businessman, we could just simply use the term entrepreneur. Also, we need to be particular with, with someone's race. When you're sure about how to refer to a group of people, ask the representatives of that group how they prefer be referred to. And lastly, we need to be particular with uh, the term disability. In writing, use language that is clear, something that is objective and stereotype-free. Labels are often generated when we use adjectives as collective nouns. So avoid using the labels disabled or schizophrenic. Instead, use people with disabilities, people diagnosed with schizophrenia. Enable for us to avoid hurting someone's uh, feeling or emotion. Therefore, we must always check your assumptions and beliefs and be as honest with yourself as possible. Next is to avoid euphemisms or colloquialisms that won't appeal to all your readers or won't apply to every person. Edit and proofread your text and then have someone else scan it multiple times too. You need to consider your diction and descriptive language. You need to practice parallel construction as your right to ensure that each individual or group of people you're referring to 
is being described and referred to in the same way. You also need to check your pronouns constantly and you need to know how to use he, she, and it. Also, try to remain as objective as possible when it's necessary to do so. Conduct and rely on a reliable research. This one is important. Whenever you're writing about a person or group, ask yourself, says who? Or it could be, is this factual statement backed up with substantial and reliable evidence? Lastly, take a third person point of view when you're writing and imagine that you are referring to yourself. And before I end this discussion, I'm going to leave you these two questions. How does the skill in avoiding bias and prejudice statements be best applied in the larger world? And next one, what are your best practices in avoiding being biased in a certain scenario? That will be all for today. Goodbye and thank you for listening. That will be all for today and thank you so much for listening. I hope that you have learned new concepts and acquired new skills that you may use in your daily lives. Always remember that there is fun in learning.